testing the English booth. This is the English booth speaking. Okay, thank you. Arnold.
a very good evening, my dear friends, <coughs> my dear mayors, my dear friends from the local government, my dear governors and local government representatives and other participants to the United Nations Habitat Assembly, the first ever UN Habitat Assembly that are joining us today. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate your presence here. I wish I can spend more time with you because I've seen many, many familiar faces. Uh, since I was a mayor in Penang, in Sebarang Prai, I met many of you. But uh, unfortunately, due to the, the job that I'm holding now, it's a really, really limited time for me to be with you. But I'm very happy to be this uh, evening together with all friends. And welcome again to the first local and regional government forum taking place within the first UN Habitat Assembly. Thank you very much. We are very happy that this event can take place today as the voices of mayor and local and regional governments are key implement both Agenda 2030 and the new urban agenda. I remember when I was in the Global Task Force, I used to be with you to say that leaving no one behind, leaving no space behind, and leaving no mayors behind in the implementation of the new urban agenda in order to attain the sustainable development goal. So these both global agendas have major, impl have major implications from day-to-day -day action of local governments, from fighting poverty, to inclusive urban planning, from protecting the environment to run reliable, affordable, and effective basic urban services. There are many connections between sustainable development goals, target and indicators, and the new urban agenda. At UN Habitat, we think that the Quito, Quito agenda is an accelerator for Agenda 2030, and many of its paragraphs talks about the key role that local government play to achieve sustainable cities, and we like to consider the new urban agenda a kind of inspiration, a spirit for change that can guide local and national action to implement the sustainable development goal. As we have said in many occasions, we need you. And I know that because I came from the local government, and I know that our role and your role as a mayor, sometimes I still forget, I thought I am still a mayor, our role, and, and our role all together. Yeah. I'm as executing, as executive director of UN Habitat, and you at the mayor at the local level, it's very, very important to tackle the urban challenges and to find a solution, and I know the challenges that we are facing on the ground with these conflicting uh, demands with the unlimited, uh, with limited uh, resources and unlimited demand from the ground, and we have to make uh, fi priorities in order to get the sustainable development goal implement, uh, implemented at the local level. So UN Habitat and UN System needs to hear the voices and recommendation of local and regional government to implement the global agenda. We hope that this first local and regional government forum bring innovative ideas about how to bring the new urban agenda and Agenda 2030 together, working in synergy for sustainable cities in more sustainable planet. I wish you the best proceeding during today's uh, discussion, and I'm sure that together we will be able to find solution, ideas, and inspiration to work together with member states partners and UN system for a better world for all. And don't forget, there are many avenue and many opportunity and platform that the local government can, inter can interact with UN Habitat. Please be at, at World Urban Forum in Abu Dhabi next year in February, 8 to 13 of February. Be there, I want to see all of you in Abu Dhabi on, on the 8th to 13th of uh, February. And please, Urban October is coming. 
uh, and also the World Habitat Day on the 7th of October. But of course, as I announced, the Global Urban Earth, uh, World uh, Habitat Day will be in Cameroon, and the World Cities Day at the end of the uh, October will be in Ekaterinburg in Russia. And of course, you can have many program at your uh, in your cities at your local government level, and please uh, uh, count on us to be together with you in, in the implementation of the new urban agenda and also to achieve the sustainable development goals. And now, without further ado, let me introduce and give the floor to the representative of the Global Task Force, M Mr. M. Pao Maru Ma Maruak Gomo, President of Botswana Association of Local Authorities, and also the President of Commonwealth Local Government Forum. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Executive Director of UN Habitat, Madam Maimuna Sharif, Mayor. <coughs> Excellencies, Mayors, members of civil society, partners, stakeholders, colleagues, and friends, and our Executive Director, Madam Saiz. <coughs> colleagues, I stand here before you representing the Global Task Force of Local and Regional Governments, which is a coordination mechanism that brings together over 24 major international networks of local and regional governments to undertake joint advocacy relating to international local government policies, policy processes and practice. For the local government and regional government constituency, constituting the Global Task Force, this UN, this inaugural UN Assembly marks the beginning of a renewed and much stronger UN habitat. We are very grateful for this, Madam Executive Director. This agency is very vital for the implementation of the new urban agenda and a key partner to our constituency. We need a strong UN habitat that will be able to support renewed normative framework and that will support the weakest in our constituency to get ready to deliver for sustainability and resilience. Today and every day, we at local government and regional governments for, uh, from around the world Working, we uh, are working to make the global agendas reach and resonate with the ordinary citizen. We are the ones who make the agendas land in the local community. The localization of the global agendas is at the core of our daily work and at the heart of our ambitions. Our constituency is convinced that time has come to move forward and enhance the partnership between local, regional, central governments and UN habitat. We are further very committed to enhancing our partnership with other stakeholders and value greatly our special partnership with the General Assembly of Partners. Far-reaching partnerships will be, on, will be the only way in which we will be able to implement the new urban agenda as critical accelerator of the global agendas as a whole. It is a critical tool to ensure that the SDGs are fully owned and shaped by local and regional governments and their inhabitants as well as other local actors. If we are given the platform, we will ensure that the entire stakeholders who form part of our social uh, capital are brought to the table. This is something that presents an opportunity for member states to develop new ideas on how to support an enabling institutional environment that allows us to increase our capacities and money to achieve the effective implementation of our common goals. An institutional environment defined by a robust legislative framework that would ensure that local government has an appropriate powers in accordance with principle of subsidiarity, that would be very, very helpful for the implementation. We are therefore very grateful for this unprecedented, for, unprecedented forum at the heart of this inaugural assembly. This dialogue between national and local governments will be a critical building block of sustainable development in the era of urbanization. Allow me to take a moment to commend on behalf of our full constituency of the Global Task Force, organized through this uh, task force, the efforts of the UN system in expanding ways of engagement with our constituency and our networks. We celebrate the increasing importance given to localization and its reflection in the UN system-wide uh, system -wide strategy on sustainable urban development under the leadership of UN Habitat, which was presented yesterday in the context of this inaugural assembly. We thank you for your efforts, Madam Executive Director. This, this colleagues, is an important takeaway for our constituency, which we look forward to building on and consolidating. 
We support the strategy's effort to enhance coherence and coordination to achieve the urban dimension of the 2030 agenda, and we totally agree that the achievement of SDG 11 has a transformative impact on delivering of the touches under our goals and purview. We call on you to enhance the involvement of local governments and stakeholders in the design of the World Urban Forum and to enhance the global alliance for the achievement of SDG 11 and localization of 2030 agenda as a whole. We further call on this assembly to make this forum a structural part of the coming sessions and offer this availability of our consultation mechanism, the Global Task Force, to shape our representation and contributions. And therefore, in the spirit of collaboration that traditionally has guided our inputs, we offer you, Madam Executive Director, and the UN Habitat, our commitment, our local knowledge and proximity to the diverse local populace, the creativity of our communities, and our hopes to leave no one and no place and no mayor behind. We are ready to shape a global future together, and we remain at your disposal. And as previously declared, please count on us. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Empau, for your commitments to implement the new urban agenda to achieve the sustainable development goal, especially the sustainable development goal 11. And your trust on me and the trust to UN Habitat as your global partner uh, together to achieve this SDG. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Lee Kin Yan Choi, Governor of Nakuru County, representing the Kenya Council of County Governors to take the floor. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. The Executive Director, uh, Maimuna Sharif, Excellency Governors present here, mayors, heads of mission, members of the county assemblies, international delegates, all distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to take this opportunity first on behalf of the Council of Governors here in Kenya to welcome you here and also to thank uh, the organizers of this event for having chosen Kenya as the venue for this very important delegation. We are indeed greatly honored to host this event. And uh, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of the Council of Governors to address you here this afternoon during the first UN General Assembly, which is the highest level governance body on the UN habitat. This assembly themed uh, innovation for better quality of life in cities and communities provides an opportunity for national government, the county governments, local governments, and international stakeholders to engage and address the global agenda on human settlements and urbanization with a key focus on implementation of the SDGs adopted by member states in 2015, and in particular, goal number 11, which seeks to make cities uh, uh, and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable, and more so for the delivery of the new urban agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, rapid urbanization continues to be a growing concern globally, and more so here in Kenya, being one of the emerging middle class countries in Africa and the fastest growing in the East Africa region, having the, huge, uh, the biggest share of urban population. Over the years, there has been a massive movement of people from the rural areas to urban areas in search of opportunities. This has resulted in a huge urban sprawl and the growth of slums. It is important to observe that uh, upon the volition, with the inception of our new constitution in the year 2010, the country was at the verge of social and economic transformation. However, even with the inception of devolution, uncontrolled urbanization continued to be a major setback in the development of the country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on this breath, it is important to note that as mandated by the fourth schedule of our constitution for 2010, county governments have, the, have made tremendous efforts to undertake county planning and development, including urban development. County governments have established urban governance institutions, including municipal boards, in which urban areas uh, uh, manage the cities, municipalities, and towns. Most of the counties are in the process of putting a framework, policies, and infrastructure to support counties in managing the urban areas. 
County governments have responded positively to the call for the new urban agenda, in which most of them are in the process of preparing county special plans, which are 10 years GIS-based plans to guide development in the counties. And I think it's important to note here that um, in the past, our urban development has largely been informed by unplanned settlements. And as we all know that uh, without good planning, the settlements that come become very difficult to later uh, correct. In 2016, the government of Kenya adopted the revised National Urban Development Policy, that is the NUNDP, with the overall objective to provide a framework for sustainable urban development in Kenya for the benefit of all the urban, for, of the Kenya Urban Development Program. We wish to acknowledge the World Bank under which the Kenya Urban Support Program was designed to support the national and county governments in the establishment and strengthening of urban institutions and systems to deliver improved services in line with the Kenya Urban Program. However, there is still more that needs to be done. The scale and speed of urbanization and the mounting fiscal constraints, including the access to services, existing and growing urban infrastructure service gaps, and the poorly functioning land markets are becoming difficult in the quest for uh, achieving the SDGs. Current mechanisms for financing urban areas rely heavily on development partners to fill the gap. This, however, is not enough as the development partner grants come with tough condition. This is a call that governments need to rethink on ways and modalities of financing their cities in Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, the potential of the devolved system of governance in the management of urban areas will be realized only if stakeholders assist, support, and consult each other at both levels of government on performance and for functions of each powers. From the foregoing, I wish to reiterate that county governments are open for partnership with the national government, development partners, private sector, civil society, and any other stakeholder in the realization of the urban agenda. It is our hope that the first UN Habitat General Assembly will open avenues for better understanding and addressing the global agenda on human settlement and urbanization with key focus on the implementation of the SDGs and the new urban agenda. The Council of Governance is therefore fully committed to adopt the resolution of this assembly on the theme and to ensure the implementation of the new urban agenda and the sustainable development goals. This can be demonstrated by this, the alacrity in which it has uh, developed structures, including committees, to lead, with the, to lead in the urban agenda and also on land matters. We also take uh, cognizance of uh, the role of uh, the county governments, especially because they are the custodians of lands in urban areas. And uh, the government of Kenya came up with the affordable housing program that seeks to create housing, especially for the lower categories that are not accessible in the commercial markets. But one of the challenges to achieving that has remained the availability of land, which often happens to be very expensive, and therefore making it very difficult for the urban poor to access housing. As a result of that, a partnership exists between the county governments and the national governments to avail land at concessional rates and therefore mitigate on the cost of housing and avail more houses to the urban dwellers. Lastly is also a collaboration between the national government and the county governments in establishing a fund that seeks to give guarantees to commercial players who seek to build houses to fill the affordable housing gap and to assure them that upon completion the government would be able to absorb the houses so that the risk of having put all your money there and not being able to get the returns in time is removed. This will greatly reduce the cost of houses and therefore increase the access to all. Once again, I'm grateful to be part of this auspicious occasion and I thank you all for your, your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee, King Yanchui, Governor Nakuru, a county representing the Kenya Council of County Governors. Thank you very much, and also you are a very great host for the UN uh, office uh, in Nairobi. And since I took uh, over the executive director as a UN Habitat uh, one year, five months, 
Now, UN Habitat has worked very closely uh, with the Kenyan government. We have the Regional Office of Africa. We have already set, set up the task force to work together with your, to achieve your big four. And also we have signed 22 MOUs, uh, signed MOU with 22 counties. And now with you beside me, maybe we can sign and work together with all the counties. We're 47, yeah? Thank you. Yeah, we, have, we still have uh, not, uh, uh, not even half yet. We have to work very hard on that. And since our footprint is in Nairobi, so count on us to partner with you and all the counties. And we are working in your youth, solid waste management, your slum upgrading, affordable housing. And we are soon to have uh, in the progress now a discussion with uh, your uh, Ministry of uh, Housing on uh, affordable housing in our land in Movoko. I think you heard about it in Thank the, uh, in the uh, Machac uh, Machacos. Machacos, yes. So we will be here together with you. So uh, friends, uh, due to the uh, my very tight uh, schedule, now I would like to hand over uh, this session to my able good friend, uh, Ms. Uh, Emilia Saiz, Secretary General of United Cities of Local Government, to continue. And I have the note taker here behind me, Diana, and whatever came out, come out from this uh, um, this uh, session, uh, we will definitely take it very uh, seriously uh, in going forward for UN Habitat. Thank you very much for all your support. Thank you very much as Asante Sana. Thank you very much, Executive Director, for your uh, for hosting us here, for enabling this, this dialogue, which is very critical for our constituency. Um, and thank you all the delegations that are joining here today, our, our local and regional government uh, delegation. Um, we are convinced that the urban agenda is certainly not an agenda only of big cities, not even only of small cities. We think that if we get the urban agenda right, we will get society right. We will guarantee livelihoods. And this is a message that we have come to give to you in this first universal UN Habitat Assembly. Um, we think that the new urban agenda and the Habitat 3 legacy is critical to achieve the global agendas in general. And you will be hearing today the messages from our delegation going in that direction. We sincerely hope that the de national delegations that are here with us today will take that into account, will bring that back home, and that a lot of this will be reflected not only in the minutes of this assembly, but in the future work uh, program of this important agency for our uh, constituency. Um, I would like to take this opportunity also to thank all the sister organizations that have joined us today. We are over 24 different organizations that join up in the Global Task Force. Many of them are represented here, and you will be hearing uh, from us as we go this afternoon. So without further ado, I would like to now give the floor to the Vice Chairman of the Latvian Association of Local and Regional Governments and the Mayor of Smiltene, um, who is is going to remind us of the importance of decentralization and subsidiarity to make uh, global agendas happen. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm representing Latvia, a country in Europe of two million inhabitants. For the last five years, I have the honor to be the major of the Smilton, municipality of 5,000 inhabitants. Likewise, I'm the Vice Chairman of the Latvian Association of Local and Regional Government. The organization defending the principles of sustainability and decentralization, which is the core topic of my today intervention. Today I also represent the Council of Europe Municipalities and Regions and Platform. The Pan-Europe Coalition of the Local and Regional Governments as their representative national, European, and global association are active in the centralized cooperation. The new, <coughs> the new urban agenda incorporates a new recognition 
of the correlation between good urbanization and development. It's underlined the linkage between good urbanization and job creation, livelihood opportunities, and improve quality of life. This highlights connection between the new urban agenda and the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. At the same time, we can observe a growing economic, social, and territorial divide globally, as well as between and inside European Union member states. However, we do not have a similar goal for balanced regional development. There is no single regional SDG goal besides pull the goals on land use. While the SDG capture the challenge of urbanization with SDG 11, we need to ensure balanced regional development to make sure that no one and no territory is left behind. Likewise, it is necessary to increase the geographic flexibility of SDGs and present them at subnation level, give the importance of SDGs and facilitating social and economic cohesion. It is of utmost importance to enable local and regional authorities to develop their law solutions with him with a bottom-up and place-based approach and fully in line with the sustainable development goals established in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Essential means to achieving, achieving the ambition in decentralization cooperation. It aims to increase the change of each the SDGs not only in Europe, but also in partner countries across the world by supporting each other, sharing best practice and capacity building to help fight territory inequalities and achieving a 2030 agenda as well as several other key international agendas. Colleagues, I would like to invite you as uh, representatives of local and regional authorities for common actions among the youth from different municipalities and share together our best practice. I presume that most of us have heard about climate actions of Swedish youngsters Greta Thurber. Now we are talking even about Greta effect as her initiative have speedily globally Attesting once again, their youth are specially attached by activities taking place at several places simultaneously. Youth are enjoying networking. Let's use a potential of our youth for the development of our local and regional authorities and states. Great minds think alike. So let's come together and implement. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mayor, and thank you for bringing the voices of the organized constituency in Europe and this important message around uh, solidarity, exchange of practices, and engaging youth, particularly in this important uh, topic around uh, climate uh, climate change and climate action. We are going now to a very different continent. We are going to Latin America and also as organized constituency there and on behalf of the municipalities of the state of Bahia, we have the mayor of Bon Jesus de Lapa in Brazil. And he is going to talk to us again about the Habitat 3 legacy and the importance of working on fiscal decentralization, but also on capacity building. Uh, mayor, the floor is yours. Interpreters note that this is a read-out version of an English paper a translation of the speech provided by the delegation, not a live interpreter, uh, not provided, not a live interpretation. I am the vice president of the Brazilian National Confederation of Municipalities (CNM) and president of the Union of Municipalities of the State of Bahia, and the mayor of Bom Jesus de Lapa. 
I'm grateful for the invitation to represent the CNM and the Brazilian municipalities in strategies to strengthen the implementation of the new urban agenda, an agenda which has a central focus on housing and urban services. I would like to offer some contributions on the legacy of Habitat 3 and, in particular, on the topic of fiscal decentralization and capacity building of local governments. As mayor and representative of the largest municipal entity in Brazil, I would like to note that Brazil has 5,565 municipalities, of which 90% have a population of up to 50,000 inhabitants. And also it's important to note that these municipalities have many um, economic activities based in the field. One of the legacies that we have helped to build, uh, that we helped to build in Habitat 3 in 2016, and one that we are addressing in the p political and legislative sphere in Brazil, as well as in forums of Latin America through the support of FLACMA, which is the Latin American Federation of Cities, Municipalities and Associations of Governments, is that the strengthening of national urban programs and financing with the participation of the private sector to enable better national and state coordination, as well as more horizontal action to strengthen local governments, as well as non-governmental organisations, and civil society by strengthening their capacities and regional vocations. On one hand, we reaffirm the need for decentralization of financial and human resources. And on the other hand, the need to strengthen and exchange experiences among mayors and local author authorities present in this forum so that we can strengthen the capacity to mobilize local resources, including taxes, so that they can be channeled to improve urban services. These are the themes and strategies that we need to focus on strengthening in particular to promote the agenda of medium-sized and small cities of Latin America. In addition, I would like to invite everyone here present to attend a Congress in 2020 in Recife, Brazil so that mayors and managers can help us build this event and strengthen the voices of local governments to implement the new urban agenda. Thank you. Obrigado, uh, Prefeito. Um, thank you very much for, for these wise words about the need to partner with civil society, for uh, the need for capacity building and, the, uh, and, and fiscal decentralization. Um, we are now going to the governor of West Java, who you might have met already. Uh, his speech in the opening ceremony has become a very famous speech here in this first UN Assembly about happiness. I know that you will talk to us today about something else, about what it means for you to implement uh, global agendas in a place like West Java. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, I come from Indonesia. It's a very big country with 34 provinces and 500 cities and regions. I used to be the mayor of one of the cities, the city of Bandung, 2.5 million population. Now. I'm a governor of West Jaffa in charge of 27 cities. So I have a, a dual perspective, one as an ex-mayor, understanding the details, but also now as a regional uh, governor, how to implement this SGD's agenda uh, in the faster way. I think uh, in my context, we have many issues that uh, we are facing. Number one is a partial and infrastructure gap. We have an uh, economic gap within the city itself. We have an issue of rural and urban gap. We have also now a digital gap. And also, uh, from my come from, we have so many disasters, so we need to increase the awareness of resilience issue becoming the one of most uh, fundamental issues in my region. 
And now uh, we propose the role as a regional uh, government is a catalyst role, uh, how to push this SDGs agenda faster. Because as a governor, I can make policy to make it the SDGs mandatory uh, and faster to 27 cities instead of one. Uh, we also would like to make uh, regional policy based on any uh, local government best practices in SDGs. For example, our happiness project in Bandung, now as a governor I can make it uh, a regional policy uh, in the next five years to the 27 cities, for example. Uh, action that I have been doing now as a governor, uh, we are creating what we call Government 3.0. It's a collaborative uh, bureaucracy meaning asking the people, asking the pentahelix uh, stakeholders, uh, ABCGM, academics, business, community, government, and media, to be responsible to our SDGs, no longer as a government role. Uh, this is also answering the, our uh, uh, saying that no one, uh, leaving no one behind. Uh, the action uh, now undergoing is we have a small uh, city strategy to reduce the rural urban migrations because the problem that we're having today, like the slum area, is because also the small city circling the metropolis that doesn't have really a strong economy. So as a, as a regional uh, government, I'm focusing to increase the capacity of economy within the small cities. We have also now focusing on the digital strategies. We have a project called Digital Village uh, to increase the economy in rural. Uh, again, once the rural economy prosper, it means also it will reduce the dependency to the urban context. Uh, we are using the digital also to give access for micro banking to the poor and uh, the uh, to the poor side of the society using the financial technology. Uh, we are now also exercising one of the most difficult challenges to our development is financing the urban development. Because the current practice in Indonesia, we finance the infrastructure in very conventional way, just using our annual city or regional budget. So I'm pushing the PPP models, public-private uh, partnerships uh, model. We are pushing the municipal bond model to finance the urban development. We are pushing also collecting the uh, organized grant or philanthropic projects. Uh, we are pushing now also the green economy, ways to energy has become a challenge in Indonesia. I'm very happy we have such projects with PPP model. Hopefully this become the model for uh, the future. So uh, this is uh, to conclude my, my uh, remarks. This is our opportunity now to support one another. I'm very happy to be here because this is the forum to increase our capacities to effectively achieve our common goals. Uh, let's enhance the involvement of local governments. It's very important because action lies in the local governments. Uh, somebody told me uh, there is a phrase, uh, uh, city acts, yeah, uh, while national government talks, more or less like that. Uh, so that's why let's have a more dialogues between local and regional and global stakeholders. And I remember once our uh, mentor, Jen Jacobs, told us, uh, I quote, change the word projects into communities. When you change the word project into co the word community, you change the perspective. We change the word, for example, housing project into housing communities. By just changing simple word, it will change the perspective. It will change the way we strategize achieving our goals. and. Uh, at the end, whatever we do, we have to do it all this with the happiness perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor, for reminding us that we cannot wait around and not do things. We will need to do them with or without the capacity, so we better have the capacities to actually do it right. Um, and now we are staying in the region and we are going to Malaysia. Uh, to, to my sister, Norani Vinti Roslan, Mayor of Subang Jaya. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emily. 
the beauty of being in a group is that we have each other to turn to. We are not alone. Being mayor is a very tough job that you are demanded every hour of your day and there is not enough resources to do all the things that you need to do. But where do we find help? Being in a group, being able to refer to another for advice, for guidance, it's, it's a good a very good thing indeed. So let's support our local and regional um, groups. Let's support United Nations. Let's support UN Habitat in preparing and in sharing whatever good things that we have done in our cities. We can uh, put up for documentation and for uh, examples of um, implementation, how we make it easier, how we make it faster, how we can even achieve things without having the budget for it. Um, but that spirit of sharing, I believe, will benefit everybody. Uh, we have these um, principles of um, act locally and think globally. Whatever sustainable measures that we do in our cities, if we find it successful, please share it with others so that the others can replicate it and maybe innovate it better so that the whole region, the whole um, planet can benefit from the sharing of knowledge, the sharing of experience, the new approaches, new technologies that we have so that the whole world can benefit. Being in the group also um, give us the strength that each countries, each national government's commitment toward helping the local government. And if they forget, just remind them that they have signed many agreements, many um, global levels um, pact that, that, that they will help local government in whether preparing uh, financially or preparing uh, the, the right policies and the right uh, mechanisms, training, to empower, to strengthen the local government in preparing um, the local governments to, to face uh, whatever race uh, and possibilities that they have to face in the future. Uh, bearing in mind all this, that we have the global partners, that we have the national government to depend on, cities have to be, to take charge of their own destiny. And we need to be prepared. We need to plan. We all know that failure to plan is uh, planning to fail. And mayors are the leaders that need to plan together with their constituencies, uh, assess the risk of what, that they are going to face in the future, and have a very concrete implementation plan, what can be done with the limited resources that you have, and what help do you need to ask for to overcome the bigger risk of, um, it could be the data failure that can cripple your community, your, your local authority for a long while. Uh, do you have the backup for it? Uh, how fast can the backup be retrieved in order for you to set up your cities again? Uh, that needs risk assessment, that needs planning in advance. Um, it's not to mention all the other natural disasters that some cities are facing and the ability for them to face those disasters. Um, most cities don't have enough resources to face a huge na uh, natural disasters. So how do we find help? Uh, how do global level communities can help with the new technologies? How can we share among each other? Uh, the least that we can do is to prevent, to protect our communities from having the negative impact of the disasters. If you don't have the technology to prevent the disaster from happening, we can save the citizen, we can save the people, we can teach them, we can make them aware on how to get back, on how to prevent themselves from being um, the, the victims of uh, negative disasters. So the role of mayors are very, very high in this. Um, with that, I thank um, our organization here that, has, that will continue to support this.
Thank you very much, Mayor. It's a very good description of the Sendai framework and the role in resilience. And thank you very much for bringing it so close to the heart of, of, of the role of, of, the, of the mayors. Uh, it's basically getting ready for anything, right, that happens, for the unknown. Thank you very much. Um, it's important work that we are doing on that with you and Habitat, um, indeed, and, and with other partner organizations. Allow me now to go um, uh, back to uh, Latin America, the north of the Americas, to Mexico. Uh, the mayor of Azcapotalco, a very difficult name for me, even if I am Latina, uh, who is going to be introducing to us the importance of working with the communities and, and, and co-creation. So, Mayor, the floor is yours. Th thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Actually, Xapuzalco is a pre-Hispanic name. That's why it's not easy, even in, in Spanish. Uh, first, uh, I have to say that uh, we did uh, a government plan based on the uh, prosper index of the city. Uh, we use every objectives of the, of the index in order to organize our plans. And uh, we got at least a policy of the uh, objectives of, of development. So we are very sure that all the framework that is discussed here is very much in our government plan in order to be really sure that we are uh, really a prime policy for all these aspects, all the, all the development. Secondly, I, I want to, to share with you our main uh, project within the uh, Council. Azcapotzalco is, is one of the 16 uh, Council within the, the Mexico City capital government, the, the, the capital government that got a new constitution three years ago is divided in 16 uh, councils and Azcapotzalco is one of them, is the industrial part of the, of the city. And our main objective is to rebuild and, and to boost this industrial capacity of the city. We are very sure that Mexico City needs a, an, an industrial area within the, the city, you know, outside, in order to, to create jobs, to, to to implement a policy for, for a better quality of life in, in the city. That, that's why we need uh, to, to keep and to boost the, the industrial area. We, we have three uh, objectives and, and three policies in order to do that. One is to, to build an innovation center with the, the, the enterprise, with the firms that are operating in the, in the area in order to increase the, the, the quality and the technological value of the products in, in Azcapotzalco. Secondly, to, to invest with the, the firms, one peso of, of the government with one peso of the firm, in order to improve the basic infrastructure of the, of the area. Uh, public light, uh, water supply, etc., in order to have a better uh, industrial park within the uh, Azcapotzalco uh, Council. That's uh, very interesting because most of the firms are very interesting in share with the government the financial responsibility of invest in that area. And third, we are uh, financing a, a very big new uh, waste disposal, uh, a very modern, in order to, to better, to, to improve uh, the qu quality of the waste uh, 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 policy in the city, but also to create a circular economy in that area and, and to promote new investment in, in, the, in the waste development and, create, and to create new, new jobs are, are mountain technology. It is a project that have the full support of the Mexico City government, the, the, the mayor of Mexico City, Claudia Sheinbaum, and it is very important and part of the whole policy of the greater Mexico City area. Uh, we are very, very uh, looking forward to share with you uh, your experience in that, in, in that policy in, in to boost uh, the, the industrial recovery of our area, and we are very glad to be here and to be part of this event. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I think it is really important to realize that there are no there are no borders uh, in in between cities, and that now that the cities concept has reached the development uh, dialogue, um, it might be obsolete already. Um, we might need to think in this uh, metropolitan uh, concept that the mayor was describing um, within a solidarity system of cities and of hubs with different service provision. Thank you very much, Mayor, for that. I would like to go now to Felicitas Kubala, the Deputy Mayor of Mannheim uh, in Germany, a very, a very different concept uh, and context, a uh, smaller city, a smaller town, but uh, with similar aspirations from this assembly. Uh, Deputy Mayor, the floor is yours. Yeah, dear Emilia Seitz, dear colleagues from local and regional governments, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to speak to you also on behalf of CMR, um, the European Platform of Local and Regional Authorities for Development. Empowering local government is the headline of my interven intervention and it is at the same time the main goal of UN Habitat. In my capacity as Vice Mayor of the German city of Mannheim, I would like to share four concrete thoughts and recommendations what it means to empower local government. Uh, firstly, global politics and agendas can only be implemented successfully when they are being localized. That's exactly what we did in Mannheim. We use the UN 2030 agenda and the new urban agenda as main reference frameworks for the city of Mannheim's 2030 strategy, as it is the transformation of the global sustainable development goals onto the speci specific local level of Mannheim. It comprises seven future topics, each with a particular strateg strategic goal. Each goal is connected to the municipal budget as well as to indicators that reflect the progress we make in achieving the SDGs. This approach proves the commitment of local authorities towards the UN 2030 agenda and the new urban agenda. I thank the German government for its financial support of Mannheim's SDGs process through BMZ funded program and for this concrete example for national frameworks empowering cities. Secondly, sustainable development will only be comprehensively achieved when all concerned parties are involved. With the Paris Climate Agreement and the Sustainable Development Agenda, the community of states has agreed on guidelines which incorporate a fundamental transformation of our world, a transformation of the way we do things. As local authorities, we are the political level closest to the citizens it's our responsible to allow their action participation. We started the process, process of localizing the SDGs with an urban thinkers campus in Mannheim in October 2017. The following 16 months, an intensive process with various participation formats, workshops and discussions took place in Mannheim. More than 2,500 men, Mannheimer residents, companies, institutes actively in contributed to this process and hereby also committed themselves to the achievement of the goals. Thirdly, the private sector is essential in reaching our goals. An estimated five to seven trillion US dollars per year are needed until 2030 to realize the SDGs worldwide, including investments to infrastructure, clean energy, water, sanitation, and agriculture. The global strategic dialogue that we hosted in Mannheim together with UN Habitat in March this year brought together key representatives from the public and private sectors in order to discuss the barriers, solutions, and the opportunities to accelerate investment in sustainable development at city level. One concrete outcome of this dialogue is the UN Habitat Business Network. I'm very delighted that this network was launched just three days ago during the Business Leaders Dialogue. 
We have very positive experience with such networks, such kind of networks, for example, in our Alliance for Climate Protection with companies situated in Mannheim. Fourthly and finally, cities are the key actors today and in future. They are the places where innovation happens and they are the agents of change. We need new ways of policy making and governance which take this into account. In a sound multi-level system of regulation, local authorities need to be equally involved in communication, negotiation and decision making processes on a regional, national, continental and global level. Local authorities need a strong, local, legitimate power to accomplish a successful transition really capable of coping with global challenges. Those empowering cities worldwide to become sustainable, social and democratic institutions is absolutely necessary to reach successfully our common goals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor, and, and all, of, all of those messages in four minutes, sharp. It's, yeah. it's really brilliant. Thank you so That's much. So you can say a lot in, in a very short time, and I think that you, you have made a very important point for us all, and which is the change of the seat of the table that, that we need to actually make this happen, and also bringing the relationship with private sector is, is very, very relevant for our constituency. <laughs> we are very honored today to have with us a very important host of this event. I'm really pleased to introduce you, sir. Um, it's um, the governor Governor of Nairobi, of this big city that uh, doesn't have much time, but has made the point of joining us. So please, Governor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, the UN officials present, governors and mayors present, all delegates distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to join you for the first UN Habitat Assembly. Let me start by extending a warm welcome to all the delegates from across the world to our city. Nairobi is a beautiful place with excellent hospitality, and I'm confident that you will enjoy your stay here very much. The name Nairobi means the place of cool waters in our local Maasai language. It started off as a trading center during the construction of the Kenya-Uganda Railway from the coast to the interior more than 118 years ago. Nairobi has since grown into a modern metropolis that is the hub of digital innovation in Africa. With this motto as the city of choice to invest, work, and live in, Nairobi is proud to be the host of the UN headquarters in Africa, hosting the UN Habitat, UNEP, and UNON. Our city is also very pleased with the partnership that we have cultivated with all these UN organizations. We have indeed become partners and welcome you to continue calling Nairobi your home. Ladies and gentlemen, our cities grow, so does the demand for services and pressure on existing infrastructure. Populations are rapidly urbanizing and more than half the people in the world now live in urban areas. This calls for concerted efforts to plan our cities and prepare to host these larger populations. Population growth also leads to a strain on the environment as solid and industrial waste, as well other forms of pollution increase. It also raises the issue of urban safety. At Nairobi City County Government, we are taking steps to address this. First, we are actively cleaning our environment, 
including managing garbage and removing wastes from the Nairobi River's ecosystem. We conduct a cleanup exercise every first Saturday of the month that has become very popular and which has helped to surprise our city. To address the issue of affordable housing, Nairobi has rolled out several projects that aim to renew all residential houses. In, in partnership with the national government under the able leadership of His Excellency the President Uhuru Megai Kenyatta, we intend to construct about 200,000 houses to support the nationwide target of 500,000 new homes in the next three years. This is being done in partnership with the private sector as well. Once again, I welcome all delegates to our city. We are the only capital city in the world with a national park where you'll find all kinds of wild animals, a visit to the Nairobi National Park, just 10 kilometers from the city center, is an experience you will enjoy. You are also invited to visit Karura Forest within the city that is closely associated with the first African Nobel Prize winner, the late Professor Wangari Madai, who was a resident of Nairobi. Nairobi is safe and has been voted one of the world's top resilient cities. With those few remarks, I wish you all an enjoyable stay and a successful conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Governor. It is really an honor to have you uh, with us. And we are extremely pleased as constituency that we have a, a very balanced representation of, of cities and, and uh, regional authorities and, and governors among us. Because the urban agenda is not only a city's agenda, it's a territorial agenda. And that, that is something um, that we have been pushing for during the negotiations of the, of the Habitat 3 agenda. And that we hope will be kept uh, also as a patrimony of this assembly in the future. Let me tell you what we are going to do now. We, we are done with the speakers that, that we had envisaged, but there are, there are many local authorities, in, in, uh, local, authorities local governments, uh, and regional governments in the room. So what I'm going to propose is that we, do, uh, that we give ourselves 10 extra minutes to take remarks from the floor, and then I'm going to invite um, our uh, colleagues, the secretaries general of some of the networks that are here here to give some thoughts on uh, how they feel this assembly is going, what our expectations are, and how they see our agenda is evolving um, here uh, in the assembly of, uh, of, UN, of UN Habitat. I would also like uh, to acknowledge representatives from uh, the regional government of the Basque country, from the regional government of Catalonia, which are very advanced in the implementation of the uh, uh, new urban agenda in their territories and, and have a very critical role to play in their implementation from that territorial approach. So we've got 10 minutes. If you would like to intervene, I would in invite you to just show me your hand and I would give you the floor for a few minutes only, but I would be very pleased um, to do that before, before closing. So do we see any hands? Uh, please, uh, Minister. Uh, take the floor. So the minister uh, from the regional government of uh, uh, Catalonia. So, thank you, Emilia. Uh, the, the, the executive director of uh, UN Habitat, uh, Madame Sharif, has said uh, in his uh, speech, leaving no wine behind, leaving no uh, mayors behind, and I would like to add, leaving no regional governments behind. <laughs> because uh, although we are facing a difficult political situation in, in Catalonia, uh, we are fully committed with the new urban agenda, fully committed with the new urban agenda, uh, in the direction, of course, of the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals. Uh, we feel that this is a powerful tool, I would say that the most powerful tool for sustainable urbanization uh, for, a, for a better human future. But this uh, needs at least two, two key two key points. First, a well-defined international framework within the UN system. 
we have observed the transformation of the former, former human habitat to the new human habitat. This general assembly concept with the executive board, the committee of permanent representative, which uh, remains from the former uh, organization, and the new strategic plan 2020-2025, the programs. Well, we will keep all our attention uh, in this new structure. Uh, because it has to be useful for the definition and implementation of the new urban agenda. If it's not useful, then uh, we would have a problem. So uh, we, we need this uh, new uh, structure of UN Habitat fully oriented to the new urban agenda. And, and second, uh, the second key issue, key issue, we also need to encourage collaboration among all levels of government. So again, local, regional, and the state government has to be absolutely aligned in this, uh, in this will. For instance, the Catalan government uh, is uh, fully responsible for uh, territorial planning, for uh, housing uh, policies, for infrastructures, for mobility, for environmental and for sustainable policies. And this is why we are uh, developing our own uh, urban agenda, the Catalan urban agenda, uh, following the pattern of the new urban agenda, and uh, through, uh, for instance, Catalan urban assembly. Uh, this is uh, our, our system. Uh, we, we love to explain ourselves. We love to learn from, from all of you. Uh, we uh, are fully committed with the global task force, with the uh, with uh, what the, the UCLG means, and uh, we would like, uh, of course, to see the position of local and regional governments reinforced in the UN system. This is uh, something, something that we would, we would love to see. Uh, so, uh, meantime, meanwhile, uh, we will uh, keep working, and of course, we will see uh, ourselves at uh, the roof uh, in Abu Dhabi. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you for your statement and for that commitment that you that you have expressed. I I have been asked for the flow from the uh, government of Spain, a, a very important supporter also of localization and the role of local and regional governments in the global agendas. Uh, please, sir, the floor is yours. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, Emilia, Secretary General. Mayors, local authorities, regional authorities, colleagues, delegates from other member states. For Spain, a country that's so decentralised as Spain is, it's a priority to strengthen governance in the local and regional governments to promote the 2030 agenda. And then we think that one of the conditions to reach, we think it's a precondition for reaching those SDGs. Also, we realise that the implement, implementation of the SDGs must be carried out as a bottom-up approach. It needs to be, well, ownership needs to be taken of this by all of the regional authorities and all the different stakeholders who take part in implementing it in these territories, in the territories. And we need to follow the principle of leaving no one behind as part of these efforts. We, we understand that the implementation process is a multi-stakeholder, multi-level process. It also requires fluid dia dialogue and intercomplementarity between all the different levels of government, the national and local levels, the regional levels of government, the national and global governance. And this all needs to interact with the communities that we deal with in the country. For that reason, Spain is fully committed to building this movement and strengthening it that we're witnessing right now. And we think that it's a local and global movement. And in this way, we are increasing localization of the SDGs. And we're also trying to promote efforts to incorporate all of this work into um, collaborating with the work of the United Nations. For that reason, we are delighted to participate in this forum for local and regional authorities. The 2030 Agenda requires local leadership for this global uh, transformation. We had a high-level uh, event in February this year with the um, governments of, February, of Cabo, Cabo Verde and Ecuador and this was a very important event 
And at that meeting, we brought together the various different uh, principles and commitments that we are all working on the basis of at the moment. So just to conclude, I'd just like to mention that Spain is an ally of the UN. It's very committed to all of these efforts and it's committed to promoting local work in local spaces and cooperating with the UN at all levels. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, eh, representante. Muchas gracias, Gabriel, por ese apoyo continuo que, que se nos está dando. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the leadership that's been provided by the government of Spain. And we look forward to seeing the work at the high-level political forum in July and September. Also, with a strong local and regional government forum there, and with a very strong civil commitment that we hope will land in the ministerial declaration. Thank you very much. It's critical for us to have this concept of localization acknowledged by national governments and having uh, pioneered uh, uh, these, these efforts. Uh, we, we are truly <coughs> grateful. Um, I have two more um, uh, hands. Uh, I, I will go now to Morocco to the to the mayor of Shevchawen, uh, our champion on intermediary cities. I would then go to uh, the regional government of the Basque uh, country, and then we will close. So please, Mr. Sefiani, uh, yep. la palabra. I give you the floor. Thank you so, so much, Emilia. I'm going to speak in French. Thank you so much, Emilia. It's extremely important that mayors, cities, regional government, local government be here for this first UN Habitat Assembly. And we could not imagine implementation of the SDG goals without the involvement, commitment, and action at city and regional level. I see Innovate for Change. We have to innovate. We do not always have all the means, the resources that we need, but we must make progress. And this is why I'd just like to give two examples concerning the city of Chefchaouen and Morocco. Chefchaouen, with the support of the UCLG, we set up what we call Vision 2030, Chefchaouen 2030, and we did this with a particip through a participatory approach. And when we did this, as we worked on sustainable development, climate change, and we brought together the private sector, the local government, and the people, as we imagined what Chefchaouen 2030 should be, implementation on the basis of four different neighborhoods, objective by objective, goal by goal. And this was a very interesting approach. And a second idea I'd like to share is that since we have signed in July in Chefchaouen during the first forum of the ULCG, this is a memorandum between the Moroccan government, UCLG, UN Habitat, for the implementation of the global agendas, the new urban agenda, SDG, with the intermediary cities. So we're setting up a strategy at national level for the implementation of these global agendas in intermediary cities, in medium-sized cities. And we support strongly what's being done here during the first year in Habitat Assembly. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Maire. Thank you very much, Mayor. The conversation between central government and local governments, it's such an important point for all of us. We're really seeing an evolution here, and that's why it was so useful that you should be here for these discussions. And now, Representative, the Vice Councillor of Planning from the Basque local government, thank you so much for your statement. Gracias. Thank you very much. Autoridades, compañeras, compañeras. Thank you very much, Secretary General, authorities, colleagues. I will be very brief, brief because we have very little time left. In the Basque country, Euskadi, we are also firmly committed to
to implementing the regional urban agenda. And I'd just like to make the most of this forum to speak about the experience that we have in implementing this agenda. And I think we need to highlight here the importance of local, subnational, and regional uh, territorial agendas. So we make sure that we highlight the roles of these regional authorities in uh, our, in Spain, and we think that's a very appropriate way to carry out the implementation of urban agendas. And, for example, one of the reasons of this is that the local governments are very close to the communities they work in, so they have an excellent knowledge of the situation and the needs of the people living in those regions. And in our case, we also think that we have the adequate territorial framework to develop sectorial policies that have an impact on uh, urban issues. So I don't want to repeat what was said in the previous statements by my other colleagues, but I would just like to add that in the bus country, we are debating and establishing uh, and understanding the challenges and actions of the urban agenda. Now, despite that, we're also, at the same time, implementing the various different uh, actions that, uh, in various different vulnerable uh, neighbourhoods, marginalised um, uh, neighbourhoods, where it's very important to engage in this, these interdisciplinary approaches, just to make sure that all of this assistance reaches the vulnerable populations. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's absolutely correct. I think it's important to look at the different levels of government to implement this agenda. There's not only one level of government. No single governmental structure can is able to implement the agenda itself. So this cross-territorial um, approach that you're describing is very important. Subsidiarity is not only about top-down approaches, but also bottom-up approaches. So I think we all need to keep all of that in mind. Thank you very much for your perspective, and I hope you'll be able to continue bringing that perspective to our forums on this issue. I have a mayor from Congo. We are going to make an exception and give one more uh, person the floor. Mayor, I have forgotten your city, but I know you are a mayor and they are coming from, from Congo. Bukamo? Bukabo. Bukabo. So please, mayor, you've got the floor. And we need to be brief, but please go ahead. Merci. Thank you so much for giving me the floor, madam. My name is Mishak Bilwi, Mayor of Bukavu in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo, but I'm also the Chair of the Platform for Local Authorities of the Countries of the Great Lakes Region, which brings together the mayors of cities from three countries, Rwanda, Burundi and DRC. I'd like to take this opportunity in order to explain to you how satisfied I am and my great pl pleasure at being able to participate in this assembly, which is giving such a wealth of information to us and to identify our weakness and to be able to find out how to correct them. We have our General Assembly taking place in Kigali and I would like to highlight the importance of national networks as well as regional networks for mayors because the experience that we have had in the Great Lakes region is that despite the conflicts through the hierarchy of the governments, the national authorities in the countries of the Great Lakes region, we mayors who live much closer to our own populations, we are making sure that we exchange, have exchanges and we know what is happening on a daily basis. We don't need to get involved with these political conflicts. And instead, we seek to provide benefits to these populations through our experience. And thank you so much for associating us within this forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. That's a very important point for us as well, the work that is being done at local level. It it's transboundary and it's extremely important 
to set up networks since these are key means in order to develop policies in the context of urban planning. Thank you so much. My colleagues, as I promised, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Local Government Forum and the Secretary General of UCLG ASPAC, our organization for Asia, for Asia Pacific. Um, you have the big responsibility, Greg, uh, dear Secretary General, uh, to, to represent uh, us all as networks and, and give us a little bit of, of, of your views of how you think uh, we have done in this forum how this discussion is progressing uh, on behalf of all the networks uh, and your own. Uh, please enlighten us. Thanks, Amelia. I, I think if in one of these forums that we go to, I walk away feeling a little bit better because I think it's becoming more and more meaningful because I think there was a case where it was hard just to get listened to. And now it feels that we are partners, that local and regional government are partners. And I think there was a, a richness of experiences across seven countries um, this evening in, in, in the presentations. But what we're really hearing, I think, is that if we are to achieve the 2030 agenda, um, the new urban agenda is critical, and we need to build on, and we heard it today, we need to build on the legacy of Habitat 3. And we do this by local and regional governments being in partnership with UN Habitat and other global stakeholders, and I mean real partnership. And that, for local and regional government, we need appropriate decentralization. We need the empowerment and the capacity building. We need integrated territorial development. We also need local innovation. And when you look around the world today, I mean, I think there's big global political challenges. And never underestimate the visionary leadership of local and regional government. So I often ast astonish people when they say to me, who are the global leaders today? And I, and I start mentioning uh, mayors and, and regional leaders. And I don't mention global leaders. And, it's, and I think we should start doing that because I think that's where some of the, the, the visionary leadership sits today in the world. So let's, let's maximize on it. Let's also remember that there's a great richness of skills and knowledge and commitment in our communities. And local and regional government is the pathway to those communities. So in this journey, let's not forget communities. It's not just about local and regional government. We need, we need a proper and enhanced local, regional, national dialogue and as equal partners. You know, in the country of my birth, the Constitution, and we did it purposefully when, when, and I was on the Constitutional Writing, one of the subcommittees when we did our Constitution, that we, we purposefully said three equal spheres of government. We never used the word tiers. So the Constitution of South Africa talks about three equal spheres of government. And we need to think about that. I would like to add the fourth sphere as being our communities. So in this journey that we're on, and I think meaningful planned spaces for dialogue are needed. And I think we've been heard here at UN Habitat. That it's not just we get together every now and then and, and then we, we, we speak and you listen. It's planned spaces for dialogue, for joint planning, for real partnership in localizing the SDGs and delivering the global, global development agenda and delivering a better world for the people who we serve. Thank you very much, Greg. Indeed, when our constituency comes to these type of meetings, we are not coming to a conference. Eh? We are not only coming here to exchange ideas. We are coming here to influence policy making. That's what we're trying to do. And I also do feel this evolution. I know my colleague uh, Bernadia from uh, our uh, section in Asia Pacific is, is doing a lot of work enhancing this dialogue with ASEAN as well. And so Bernadia, what is your, your, uh, what are you taking home from, from, from Nairobi this yeah. time? Th thank you, Emilia. I think when we uh, speak about the uh, role of local governments, um, 
we know that we make a very good progress and making our voices louder and louder and louder. And it's been consolidated to the global task force. I think this is a good achievement. And when we look at the I mean the uh, adoption or maybe the creation of sustainable development goal, we also manage to influence that goals. I think we should be really, really uh, proud of what we have been done on that. Yeah. And the second, when we talk about SDGs new urban agenda, we know that 65% of the targets of SDGs must be implemented at the local level. We know that, but. We know that we have limited capacity. And of course, uh, we understand the importance of decentralization, local democracy, as well as uh, uh, having a good financial options for local governments. And I was very pleased that uh, the Minister of Malaysia mentioned that uh, within three years, Malaysia is going to uh, have a local democracy and local election. This is very, very important. And we have we have faced a lot of problems, a lot of challenges, but we know there are solutions. So this is why um, we, have, we should not feel like uh, we are alone in this world. And when we talk about solutions, there are so many good practices, best practices available, like Guangzhou Innovation Awards. They have managed to collect almost more than 1,000 best practices. So we should not repeat the mistakes what others have been doing. We can have a leapfrog, and we can make sure that uh, prosperity can be achieved sooner, much, much sooner, or much faster. So what, um, back to your question, uh, Emilia. For, for Asia Pacific, is a huge uh, region. Uh, we face a disaster uh, almost every day uh, in many places. And we also see the importance of regional cooperation. This is something that we, we haven't talked about. Uh, before, because we believe in the role of regional cooperation like ASEAN, uh, including SACS, this is South, South Asian. And we are so pleased to inform everybody that uh, we receive accreditation uh, from ASEAN as the first local government's network receive accreditation by ASEAN because we want ASEAN to recognize the role of local governments as well. And, and the uh, ASEAN Sustainable Urbanization that just released by ASEAN, they didn't even mention the importance of localization of heritages. So we have to speak louder in our region. I'm so happy that the uh, governor of Java is now taking a very important role of having a, a population of more than 50 uh, uh, million people. We need a champion like him to speak louder what the local governments need to do. And I'm here also as a member of AGI. Uh, this is advisory group on uh, uh, gender uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, I, I advise, we advise, uh, as a member of AGI, we advise the executive director about the importance of gender equality. What we have really, we have not done enough is that our constitution of having gender uh, women elected uh, uh, number uh, is not that huge, like Malaysia only five women mayors, and, and then uh, Maimuna, Dr. Maimuna was the, one of the mayors before. So we need to put, we have to put uh, the importance of having in the constitutions, the elected women uh, leaders, because if women are giving the place, they will do best. They will do best. So this is how, and my last point is that, uh, we have been given space. We have been given space in, in having a dialogue consultation with the United Nations and, as of course, an uh, important uh, dialogue to have uh, with UN Habitat. But I think we have to enhance our involvement further. Uh, maybe we can uh, request for uh, having dialogues with the executive boards of UN Habitat, but not about just only the program or strategy, but we have to really speak louder that we need a strong UN habitat that also work on the normative works, including all the aspects of financing and others. So that's from my side, and my last point is that let's have a very, um, very, uh, well, but because let's have a much stronger local government associations in the country because they have the capacity to lobby with uh, uh, our nations and also uh, much bigger uh, players uh, in this world. So thank you very much.
you very much, dear colleagues. I think you have summarized pretty much what we have submitted to the member states and to this assembly as our statement of the, of the global task force of local and regional governments. Again, when we mobilize a delegation uh, to this kind of venue, um, is, is not only to exchange on technicalities, but it's actually uh, to make progress in policy making. And for that, we, we have also some strong instruments that we have been working on and that we hope that member states will consider strengthening as well. We have the United Nations um, uh, committee on local authorities, the advisory committee on local authorities, UN ACLA, that is, that is linked with the membership of the global task force and that in our view can be a very critical instrument to actually make this dialogue structural. I also welcome very much the idea that has been shared by, by my colleagues to seek um, a direct dialogue with the executive board that has been recently appointed. So many things that are also contained in our statement, we invite delegates uh, to read them. And now a round of thank you. Thank you, Diana Lopez, our dear colleague from the local government unit here in uh, UN Habitat, always having my back and having all of our backs um, and, and doing a great job. But also thank you all the other UN Habitat uh, uh, colleagues that are working every day for our constituency as well and building the capacity of local and regional governments worldwide. Uh, thank you, Executive Director, for creating this space. Thank you, dear colleagues from the networks, from ICLE, from CMR, from CLGF, from IMF, and from so many, many more that I am forgetting for sure, but they are all listed here in our statement. Thank you all. It has been a pleasure to moderate this session. Thank you for your patience, and have a good evening. <laughs>